OK, so here are a couple of problems that involve using the factor theorem. So given that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x, find the value of p. So the fact that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x means that f of 3 must be 0. So f of 3 must be 0. So if I substitute in 3, so 3 squared take away 3p times 3 plus 5 must be 0. So 9 take away 9p plus 5 is 0. So we're going to get 14 is equal to 9p. So p is equal to 14 ninths. OK, and that's found p. So that's how you would work with number 1. OK, so knowing that when you substitute the value in, you're going to get 0 is the way to access it. So in this problem, we know that x minus 2 and 2x minus 5 are both factors of g of x, where we've got this a and the b to find. Now, the x minus 2 we can deal with at this stage. Um, so g of 2, uh, because x minus 2 is a factor, g of 2 must be 0. So substituting 2 into this, so we get 6 times 2 to the power of 6, so 384, plus a times 2 to the 5, so 2 to the 5 is 32, so 32a, uh, plus 30 lots of 2 to the 4, so that's 30 lots of 16, so that's 480, plus b lots of 2 squared, so 4b, minus 9 lots of 2, so minus 18, plus 10, and that's got to be equal to 0. So clearly this is something I want to tidy up. So therefore, we've got 32a plus 4b, and let's um, move everything else onto the right-hand side of this equation. So 384 plus 480 uh, minus 18 plus 10, so that's minus 856. Now, if I divide everything through by 4, we're going to get 8a plus b is equal to minus 214. OK, so that's the first equation. You can see where this is going. OK, uh, we've got two unknowns, two equations are going to come from this. Now. Because we know that 2x minus 5 is a factor, OK, this situation didn't deal with um, having something like 2x minus 5. It's just dealing with x minus a. So actually, you can extend the factor theorem. So instead, if I had something like ax plus b, let's say ax minus b. If ax minus b is a factor of f of x, then f of b over a is actually equal to 0. So it's effect, that's coming from the fact that ax minus b, if you put it equal to 0, that means that x must be b over a. So because ax minus b is a factor, x equals b over a is a root. OK? And that's why substituting b over a into f should get you 0. So you can extend the factor theorem. So that means that if 2x minus 5 is a factor, then g of 5 halves must be 0. So I need to substitute 5 halves into this. So 6 lots of 5 halves to the power of 6 is uh, 4, 6, 8, 7, 5 over 32. Right, so substituting 5 halves into that, so 5 halves to the power of 5 is 3, 1, 2, 5 over 32. So 3, 1, 2, 5, and we've got um, A 
okay, 31250, 32A. Then 30 lots of 5 halves to the 4 is 9375 over 8. Then B lots of 5 halves squared, so 5 halves squared is 25 quarters, so 25 quarters B. Then minus 9 times 5 halves is minus 45 halves, running out of space. Then plus the 10, and that's got to be equal to 0. Do well there, so put equal to 0 there. Okay? So I want to tidy that up because it looks absolutely ghastly. Okay, so we've got the 4, 6, 8, 7, 5. Let's um, first of all write the 3, 1, 2, 5 over 32A plus 25 over 4B. Let's move everything onto the right hand side of the equation. So 4, 6, 8, 7, 5 divided by 32 plus 9, 3, 7, 5 over 8. Uh, take away 45 halves uh, plus 10. Uh, so that's minus 83975 over 32. So let's simplify this up. Let's, um, let's multiply everything through by 32. So 3125A plus uh, 25 over 4 times 32. So 200B, and then that's minus 83975. So let's divide everything through by 5. So 3125 divided by 5 is 625. So I probably could have divided through by more there, but let's keep going. 40B is equal to... 83975 divided by 5, so minus 16795. We can divide through by 5 again. 65 divided by 5 is 125. Um, A plus 8B. So 16795 divided by 5 is minus 3359. Okay, so I've got equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, we're getting there. So, equation two, if I want to get rid of the b's, so we're going to eliminate those. So, if I do equation two, take away eight lots of equation one, we're going to get 125, take away eight lots of eight, so that's 61, so 61a. The b's have cancelled, minus 3359, uh, take away 8 lots of minus 214 is minus 1647. Divide that by 61, and we get A as being minus 27. So if I sub that into number 1, then we've got 8 lots of A, so 8 lots of minus 27. So that's minus 216 plus B is minus 214, so B must be 2. So A is minus 27, and B is 2. So this is a pretty horrific example, um, a very complicated one, just like based on the numbers, really. The actual mathematics behind it isn't challenging. It's really just keeping track of these large numbers. But remember, you know, you can keep simplifying things using a calculator and helping you out that way. OK, so this is a pretty extreme example, but it gives you an idea of what you can do using the factor theorem and these problems.